mean, I've been hearing about DACA for so many years. Some people call it dreamers. It's not dreamers. Don't fall into that trap. And I said the other night, you know, we have dreamers too. We have dreamers in this country too. We can't forget our dreamers. I have a lot of dreamers here. But DACA, we want to take care of DACA. And I hope we will. Where's home? I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. My dad was in the States for, for a while. And just, I guess, uh, to create a better situation for his family to put us in good schools education wise. I was nine. I didn't I wasn't thinking about anything but I'm going to America to see my pops and I would like to play soccer in America. That's literally all I remember thinking about. As an artist, my mission is to inspire, to spread love, real authentic love, and to give hope. Hope to the hopeless. I don't really drink. I don't smoke. I solely believe in the power of the arts. I found out about DACA on the news and then a whole bunch of like family members and friends all over the states heard about it too. It was like a big thing. Let's be real, I get 300 kids a year. So let's just say I, I roughly had 25,000 students. 25,000 students I've taught, how many of them do I get to maintain in contact with? Yeah. Maybe a good 100 or so. Right. And you become one of that 1%. And each teacher gets that 1% and we try to follow them through the ups and downs. The, the main purpose of the piece is to, I guess, inspire other DACA kids, because I'm a DACA mm -hmm. kid. Question, what does the whole DACA thing mean to you? Um, DACA is, DACA is just a, it's a leeway for people like myself, my sister, and a bunch of other little kids like me to work, to pay taxes, to, to freaking drive. We had a kid from um, your year who went to sleep one night and woke up out of a trunk in Texas and was taken to live out of a, a room in Bowie. No parents, no nothing. And he was the first dreamer who I had. I have three kids on, on this year's soccer team who are dreamers. And you know, you, you gotta, you, we look out for them because we understand the fight, the, the struggle they have to go to. Everybody has a role to play in our society and you're a dreamer, you're a DACA kid and you can just take it to a whole other level. If they see nothing but positive coming out, they have to respect it. it. All takes that one domino, man. So if you could, if you could like put out that energy, let the rest of the world know, then we're gonna be good. I definitely write what I feel. So a lot of the new content, whether it's visually or like lyrically, is going to not necessarily be political because I want to make music for everyone, but it's definitely gonna address and educate people. There are 690,000 official DACA registrants, and uh, the president uh, sent over what amounts to be two and a half times that number to 1.8 million. The difference between 690 and 1.8 million were the people that some would say were too afraid to sign up, others would say were too lazy to get off their asses, but they didn't sign up. I posted a picture on Instagram. I was in LA and I met up with these group of kids from Brown Issues and they gave me this shirt. And, and um, I posted this picture and, you know, Instagram is a big world, you know? It's like a world of its own. And just started getting a bunch of comments. This dude was like, why don't you just apply? <laughs> I was like, whoa, where's the application, my man? Here's a tip, get here legally instead of looking for sympathy when the law gets enforced. So first off, I came here legally, bought a plane ticket, got on the plane, and I came to the United States. I came here legally. Most people on DACA came to the United States legally. It was me, my two, well, three younger siblings. I'm the oldest, so it's myself, my sister, and my two youngest brothers. They were born in the United States. My sister and I and my mom came from Nigeria. So like home to them is America. Home to me is here. They're even a, I can't even fathom the thought of permanently not being able to see my younger siblings. Dang, that was I think that would, uh, that would, I don't want to say uh, break me, that would 
pause me. <laughs> Even going away for like, for tours and stuff, it's like, uh, it's tough, just, yeah. Just being away from them. Yeah. You wanna take a break? Yeah. Yeah. DACA recipients are not criminals. They're not. We weren't here, we weren't brought here by, a lot of times by choice, like, I was, I was nine years old. And what am I gonna fight my parents? And um, I, I would really like it if people would do some homework and not speak of something that they know nothing of. You know, it's uh, it's very it's very annoying. It's it's just pure ignorance, and it's cruel to bash a bunch of people that people that weren't necessarily brought here on their own will by their own will, however you say that. It's it's not humane. It's uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's evil. So that's it. I was nine years old. Mama said, let's go. Go and pack your clothes. We got a new home. And your daddy's waiting in America. We got a nice home and a nice car. Don't you worry, we gon' have a better life. We will be born again, happy family. Uh. If it's my own way, I'll tell I know it. Was just a young so what could I say? But if it's God's way, I'll go anyway. And I was brought to come and live the American dream. Come and live the American dream. Daddy said, come and live the American dream. Come and live the American dream.